Tomorrow marks a grim anniversary of the crash of a Pan Am jetliner into a Kenner neighborhood about a half mile from New Orleans International Airport. Tonight, Eric Paulson looks back at that day where 154 lives were lost, and we should warn you, some of the descriptions of what happened back then are graphic. 40 years ago on July 9th, 1982, then Kenner Mayor Aaron Broussard was in this neighborhood that had turned into an inferno with the crash of Pan Am Flight 759. Combating this fire and this, this uh, great catastrophe it was complicated by a tremendous rainstorm that initially hampered a, a lot of efforts to, to locate residents that were scattered and people that were injured. Forty years later, walking with Aaron Broussard in this neighborhood is hard for the former mayor. He says that day left scars that will never heal. I, I haven't done this. I, I haven't walked in 40 years. I haven't walked down this street to try to recollect anything from it. Because when you get to this point, you started to see things uh, that were horrible. And, and you, you don't want to ever see, think about that? No, it was just human carnage that where bodies were rearranged in, in, in the most horrific ways you can imagine. Many Kenner residents. And for reporters covering the crash that day, it was like covering a war zone. Uh, just a moment ago, I had a man approach me to ask me if I knew whether there were any survivors on the plane. I told him I did not know but I did tell him that it looked pretty grim. In fact, all 146 people on the plane were killed. Eight people in this neighborhood died that day. Broussard had friends who were on flight 759 and knew the people who were killed on the ground. It was spitting and popping. And Evelyn Pucho was on her patio that day and saw the plane plow through her neighborhood. It was horrible. And I had my two grandsons from Indiana here, Sandra's kids, and uh, in fact, Brent was sitting up at the table. He was standing at the at the window. He saw it. He saw it. My grandson Carrie was getting ready to go over to play with Jennifer. And thank God, the rain was just coming down in trenches. It was a, a bad, bad rainstorm. The rain likely saved her grandson's life. He did not cross the street to see his friend Jennifer Schultz. She was in her parents' carport on the phone talking to another friend. And when she saw it, she says, oh my God, she saw the plane coming. Jennifer did. Jennifer was killed. Her mother Barbara and her sister Rachel and Rachel's friend Lisa Bai were all severely burned. Evelyn saw that too. The house was on fire. Barbara had enough sense to tell the girls to get down and look, get out of the smoke and the fire. So they crawled out. They crawled over here on, uh, on this, this next house next door onto the steps. Well, then I came and I brought, I wet some sheets. Went inside and got my sheets and wet them and put them on the, uh, Barbara and the kids. I took them out on, on the swing here and we was waiting for the ambulance to come get them. And they wanted to use my garage as a... Triage. Triage, yeah. The ambulance told me, he said, that's the best thing you could have done. Because Barbara had, she, she was heavy, and she had sheets of, of uh, skin. I don't know if you ever seen people burn, but the sheet, you know, your skin melts down. It must have been horrific. It was horrible. Barbara and Rachel survived. Lisa Bai died that night at the hospital. Later on, Lisa's mother asked Evelyn what, if anything, her daughter said that afternoon. She asked me, did Lisa, she knew Lisa was over here on my swing immediately, so she kept coming over here. Did Lisa ever ask about me? Did Lisa say anything about me? And I said, she said, Mama, but you know, they were burned so bad. Those were Lisa Bai's last words. Barbara Schultz survived until her death several years ago. Her daughter Rachel is now 47 years old and her father Chris says she's doing just great. There was one other survivor that day, a 16 month old baby girl named Melissa Trahan. Now, finding that baby was the only upbeat moment we had on this site. There was nothing upbeat about this site, but that finding of that child, that, that gave us hope. People instantly cheered and applauded and said, well, hallelujah. That's we why they called her the miracle baby. She was indeed. Well, Melissa Trahan, who was dubbed the miracle baby, is now married and a mom. Her mother and sister were both killed in the crash of Flight 759. 
Uh, the NTSB said the accident was caused when the jetliner hit a microburst induced wind shear during takeoff. Well, since 1993, the FAA mandates wind shear detection systems be installed at all airports and on board aircraft.